Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome into the show. It's the show. It's the show before the show after the show. That's what the cool kids call it now. Yeah, I'm, I'm not hip with the kids like I used to be, Mike. Not like you. Me and the young people, we get along. Well, the beard and the tattoos and the poor vocabulary. You fit right in, Mike. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Sweet well, burn. Welcome. It is Tuesday, April 19th, and uh, we're back. We're back again. We're talking quarterbacks. The most important position in sports. But not in fantasy I'll football. Say the, the least important position in fantasy football. No, but Mike. <laughs> but Uh-oh. Ma- but Uh-oh. Mike. The quarterbacks score the most points, and, and I've seen people win a championship. They always have a good quarterback. They do, public opinion. Oh, they man. Do. I I always like uh, – you know fantasy football season is is here when all of your friends start to say that to you <laughs> because that's what I get every year by somebody who's new, and then it's just like, well, uh, the first pick has to be Cam Newton, right, well, Andy? I mean, and, and to be fair, it, it, it at first glance, it would appear yeah, that way. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it's fine. But we're going to get into that. And that yes. I do want to take time today on the show to kind of talk about that piece of the quarterback puzzle. Not just go through our top 10 rankings, which we will be doing, but also talk about how we view quarterbacks, how we view the position in fantasy football. Fantasy football teams, traditionally, unless you're in a league with a special scoring system, they start one quarterback. And so we're going to talk about what that means to you, the amount of quarterbacks that are available compared to uh, that start in your league and those type of issues so we'll get into all of that today today is a quarterback show we'll go through the top 10 consensus today on thursday we're going to go through 10 more quarterbacks and kind of get into some of that second tier which is really important and so it's going to be good it's going to be a great show i got a good quick question for you today before i do that i do want to reach out to our listeners over over the microphone and let them know about something cool that's going on right now over at podcastawards.com. And so we'd like to enlist the support of our listeners to take a couple minutes out of your day, if you're willing, and go over to podcastawards.com and nominate us for the sports category and for the people's choice category. Foot Clan, assemble. Oh, you (laughs) unite, assemble. You ruined it, Jason. I'm so sorry. Unite and assemble. There you go. And it'll be really cool to get the show um, some recognition in the in the podcast space kind of uh, universal, you know what I mean? Where everybody else is uh, shows from different categories are getting voted on and getting nominated. And so if you'd like to help us be included in that, you can go to podcastawards.com. I think you just scroll down a little bit and you can nominate us for, uh, you only get to do it one time. And so uh, we're telling people to go and, and it should be obvious, but nominate us for the sports and for the people's choice and see what we can do. Yes. Let's just see what happens. Let's see the power of let's the... Let's get nuts. Let's see what power... The power of the Foot Clan. Oh. The oh, power of the Foot Clan. You've been challenged. All right. And uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do so at the FF Ballers. We're always putting some pretty cool stuff out there. Uh, this is the first show since Kobe went... Kobe oh. in, the, in the final game Vintage of his Kobe. career. Yes. So I was tweeting about that a little bit, which was... It was neat to see. And I think the best thing I read was how Kobe gave a gift to both his haters and supporters in his final game. He gave 60 points to all his uh, supporters, and he gave 50 shots, <laughs> 50 shot attempts to his uh, to his haters. So that was fun. And the Warriors, congrats to the Warriors on an awesome season because I'm talking about other sports. Enough now. basketball. Yeah. Enough. All right. Let me see here. We've got uh, – well, let's just get into it. Let's all right. a quick question. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Quick question. We had a big trade that went down on Thursday. Is that correct? Correct. And that was the uh, the Rams sending the house for the number one pick. And so that brings good, fantasy football good trades grief they did. to my mind. Oftentimes in our league of record, we trade a lot of draft picks. We trade players. So what is your most memorable fantasy football trade? Oh. And by the way, Foot Clan, if you're out there and you've got one that pops into your head, send it our way on Twitter at the FF Ballers. We'd love to read a ridiculous story in your favor or against you either way yeah yeah it doesn't have to be good i'm gonna go with um i'm gonna go with a different one you i've i've done the or i've talked about the doug martin matt ryan for adrian peterson one 
I'm going to talk about a, a different trade here. I'm going to give some dap to Andy mm. because I don't even know if he recalls this. I like stories that begin this way. And I will, I will preface it with neither of us saw this coming. However, I was in a situation where I had Le'Veon Bell and Eddie Lacy. This is the year before. So this is Le'Veon Bell's rookie year. Uh, I got into a situation where I had to move one. I was allowed to keep one, but I had to move one. And it was, I don't know who to keep. You know, Lacey or Bell. Oh, I do and, remember this. And I was talking with Andy about it. He's like, I think I would keep Lev Bell. And Lev Bell had not become what he is. Lacey was already establishing himself as being a force. And I was like, you know, I, I agree, actually. And I ended up keeping Le'Veon Bell over Eddie Lacey, which for a little bit seemed terrible. Oh, I, I think I remember you not being happy with yeah, that. Yeah, initially it was terrible, but now Le'Veon Bell is the best running back in fantasy. So that How, how is that a, a trade, though? Because I had to trade. I had to pick one to trade away. Ah, gotcha. Okay. And I did not trade Bell. I traded um, I'm with you. Um, I was really hoping that it was just your favorite fantasy trade so I could bring up Rick Smith's in basketball uh, fleecing <laughs> of Andy when he was a little child. <laughs> We're, uh, we're talking 15 years ago, and I still remember sending you Sean Marion and his fantasy goodness for Rick Smith's and his yeah. w- white height. Uh, <laughs> but if we're going football, I think this just – I can't remember if this was on the, the Join the Foot show or on the last episode, but since uh, – I'm, I'm going to go with my Aaron Hernandez trade where after some of the news broke <laughs> and things started looking bad, I was able to get like a fifth rounder in our keeper mere league. moments before a murder indictment <laughs> yeah and then it was like he's yours oh he's out of the nfl yeah i i'm gonna i'm gonna go back to the well here because i don't know how many people heard me tell this story before but i still and forever will remember trading donny avery for d'angelo williams straight up right before d will led the league in rushing in the middle of the season took me to a championship game so very good memories of the donny avery d'angelo williams trade um, I, I forgot to mention it. If you haven't been to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, our rankings are on there now too. So Woo-hoo! you can follow along with us when we go through our consensus rankings. They'll be changing very frequently. It, uh, you know, we go in and we put the stat lines that we believe players will assemble or, or put together on the course of a year. And so those are things we adjust. You know, you get information like we just had with this trade that went through. Maybe it adjusts what we think about, you know, the running game in Los Angeles maybe the Tavon Austin, uh, those type of situations. So uh, do we have news that we need to get the into? The news is really just the trade, and if you have not heard, so, yeah, summarize like that we, we we'll... spoke about the Rams made a huge offer to the Titans. They have swapped first-round picks, and essentially the Rams gave up two second-round picks this year and a first and a third next year. So, I mean, there's a couple auxiliary late-round picks. To move picks. up from, what, 15? Is that where they were? Yeah, they were at 15, and they moved to the 1. Yeah, so they they moved up quite a bit, and they paid quite a bit. And we talked about this on the Patreon show over at jointhefoot.com. The fact that when the Redskins did this and gave up the farm to get right. RG3, it looked really good for the Redskins for the first year. He led them to the playoffs. And so it's a, it's a big risk. And I, I can see the logic. I would be excited as a Rams fan because I know I'm investing in the future of my next 20 years, or that's, that's an exaggeration, but maybe the next 10, 10 years, you're hoping, you hit, yeah, you hit, you're hoping yeah. to get the guy that defines your franchise, the Andrew Luck, the Peyton Manning, those type of players. So we'll see how it works out. I'm excited for the draft. We've I, got good guests coming on the show, by the way, to discuss the draft yes. before and after. Some awesome guests coming up, I, I think. But great fantasy analysts, some NFL players. Uh, but I do want to give a shout out because this was great analysis from one of our uh, Twitter followers, Kyle, uh, and he he said, uh, you know, uh, regarding the trade, he just said it's finally happened. Jeff Fisher has helped the Titans win games. It just took a little while. <laughs> it just took him leaving and uh, trading oh. all of his future talent yeah. to the Titans. But so speaking of paying a lot, you know where you will not pay a lot for some sweet, sweet sports memorabilia? That is pristineauction.com. Look, Foot Clan, you've heard us talking about them for a while because they are worth it. The website, they just revamped it. It is tremendous. It is beautiful. It is easier than ever to navigate and find yourself fantastic memorabilia, not just sports, but all kinds of memorabilia, 
look, we traversed their warehouse the other day, and there was like, signed autographed Mike helmets was everywhere. Mike was, was freaking out. I was geeking out. There's Luke Keekley signed helmet. There's a Lev Bell signed jersey. The guitar. There's a yeah. There's a custom Arizona Cardinals guitar. I mean, there's all kinds of goodies. I felt like I was at the Willy Wonka chocolate yeah, factory. You looked like it. Geeking out with all this sports memorabilia. And look, authenticity is important to them. It is one of the most important things for pristineauction.com. They guarantee authenticity of all their items. They use only the best uh, authenticators around the world. So head on over to pristineauction.com. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com and start winning some stuff today. Quarterbacks. All right. It is time for our consensus top 10 at the quarterback position. We've uh, hopefully if you if you haven't just joined us, you've heard our tight end and our wide receiver and our running back shows. Well, now it's time for the quarterbacks. And I'm excited to to debate a number of the guys that ended up in our top 10. We actually had a fairly good consensus with these guys. So I don't think there will be any maybe extreme, you know, like the kind of fights we had with tight ends <laughs> sure. uh, or disparities that we did. Not as many at the at the quarterback position, but you can go to the website and view the rankings there and you'll see four-point and six-point rankings. So depending on your league scoring format, we are giving you them at uh, – are we doing the six-point? Six, six yeah, we're giving point. you the six-point consensus. The baller's preferred – Scoring format. Yeah, ballers preferred. <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so uh, what are the headlines here at the uh, quarterback position before we get into our number one guy? So just, we, when we were talking about kind of unimportant, uh, I mean, that's being a bit facetious, but the point is that quarterbacks are scoring. All of them are scoring a ton of points. In 2015, there were 11 quarterbacks who threw for 30-plus touchdowns. That's the most in NFL history. The touchdowns are coming. That's almost a full 12 team league worth of quarterbacks right. that are throwing 30 plus, which is kind of 10 years ago you never would have seen. So that. I mean it's it's outrageous. Uh you had four quarterbacks at over 400 completions with uh Rivers, Breeze, Ryan and Brady and they it's something I did a, a huge breakdown. I'm still trying to work out if if I'm going to do an article on it or not talking about quarterbacks who posted a top 12 week. So how many teams are in the NFL, guys? Uh, 30, 32. And here's the number of quarterbacks who posted a top 12 scoring week. 40. <laughs> That's just an insane stat. 40. That's incredible. And so when, when we say, you know, draft your quarterback later, it isn't because quarterbacks don't matter in the NFL or because or quarterbacks that there aren't really good ones. don't score a lot yeah. of fantasy points. It's because there are so many who will be able to score enough where the difference between – Wasting one of those early picks where there aren't so many guys in their positions, it, it hurts you by by that. You're you're losing more than you're gaining is the whole issue, and we want our listeners to gain more I than they lose. I believe it was 42 last year, so th th we got not, back to not back. an anomaly. Is what yes, you're saying. this is this is happening. And part of this, before we get into the rankings, is to look back a little bit and and say, not only did we see that with the quantity last year. But you also saw, like Jason used the phrase, wasting a pick. And I think he's right. It is a waste. It could be a waste of a pick. Um, you know, Cam Newton was the number one quarterback last year. Cam Newton's draft position was nowhere near where we expected the number one quarterback to go. Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so the variable of who might end up at that spot, a lot of people spent high draft picks on Andrew Luck after the year he had, and a lot of people will spend a high pick on Cam Newton this year. That doesn't mean Cam Newton will fail or fall on his face. It just means the investments yeah. from your league mates on quarterbacks is an opportunity for you to take advantage of better values at running back and wide receiver. Cam, Cam Newton was <laughs> – I just I pulled it up. Yeah, you get his he was ADP? the 15th quarterback off the board in the 10th round. Where Whew. was Brady? Uh, Tom Brady – was uh this, sixth round yeah sixth round seventh quarterback let, me, let me show Palmer? you a couple of these guys yeah. yeah that's what i was gonna bring up some of these quarterbacks who went a little bit later um did not cost you an early pick and were great carson palmer was it 
in the 11th round of the draft, the 17th quarterback off the board. You had Tyrod Taylor, who had a great year, who was the 20th off the board in the 13th round. Mariota, what about Ryan Fitzpatrick? Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Can you even find him? Yeah. Is, is not in the data set, <laughs> and he was great. Now, let's look at the top, right? Up near the top, Peyton Manning. Uh, he was the third off the board. Oh, Peyton and Manning? Andrew what? Luck was the first. <laughs> Andrew Luck was the first off the board. Matt Ryan uh, was up near there. So, you've got some uh, – some. now, clearly, some of the top guys, they will score more, yes. right? Yes. There's a reason they're ranked in a certain order, and we've, we're doing our rankings. We think some guys are better than others. But all these top guys we're talking about, generally speaking, are not going to be on any of our three teams because of what you have to give up when you draft them. And that's the whole point. Uh, really, it's hard to find expert fantasy players who draft quarterbacks high, but it is so tough to do, if you haven't done that yet, to trust that you will be okay later with a, with a lower-round quarterback. And another important thing for uh, listening to the fantasy footballers, through the season, we every week pick our, our three guys. We pick someone off of waivers who is owned in less than or, – or is, is available in more than 50% of the leagues, and we do that to, to stream the position. Last year, we ended up with a – do you remember I our ranking? I was the six, quarterback six yeah, the, on the, average. Basically, yeah. every single week through the average of the year, we had the sixth best quarterback. From the waiver from wire. From the waiver wire. It wasn't even a guy who was drafted and every week on the waiver wire. So you can do it. Yeah, and, and so if this is your first introduction to that philosophy, stay with us. Stay with us on that. It is – Got to stay strong. That the, the draft room can be pretty uh, pretty rough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. People yeah. will and mock another, you. And, and I, I will admit – that it happens to me as well when you get to a certain point in the draft. Start feeling it. And you start seeing. I mean, I think last year I took Matt Ryan in the sixth round in one of my leagues, partially because we had we had high hopes for him. And when you do that and you have an expectation, it also makes it harder to switch that guy out and start streaming. Because Matt Ryan started the, ah, uh, he'll, he'll figure it out. He'll fi uh, well, he'll figure it out here soon. And then it was harder for me to move on to the next guy. Same thing with Sam Bradford last year. I thought Sam yeah. Bradford would be yeah. something he wasn't. It took a while for me to trade off. If I had just been streaming the position, I'd have moved right into success earlier. So, number one on our consensus rankings, it's not Brett Favre. I thought it was Favre. Uh, oh, Aaron Rodgers <laughs> last year, um, 31 touchdowns, uh, yeah. just under 4,000 yards. This is a guy who belongs at number one. Yeah, he had a terrible year. I mean, that's how people think of last year for Aaron Rodgers, even though it was still – fantastic he had a great year but he it was you know he has not been, a Rodgers year though no for yes. certainly not I mean Rodgers he is the all-time uh, in the history of the NFL has the highest quarterback rating of all active or former NFL players Aaron Rodgers really is, yeah he is uh wow the best career rating with 104 um so he is he is great here's the difference with Rodgers from fantasy because not every great quarterback is a great fantasy quarterback over three of the last four years, Aaron Rodgers has been a top three guy. I mean, that's just that's what you look for. If you are going to spend a high pick, if you know, oh, man, I I just can't do the streaming thing. I've got to get someone high. Or two-quarterback league where the, the oh, need, yeah. the need yeah, yeah. for a quarterback yeah. is much higher because yeah. the demand for the position is higher. Yeah, and, and that's, that's really – I'm so happy you said that because we got some people last year that said they tried to stream in two-quarterback leagues – uh, it's going to be harder, you, much harder. Almost impossible. So if you are in a two-quarterback league, it's really important you understand you, you're not streaming quarterbacks. You need to draft the quarterbacks like you do running backs in a two-quarterback. Everything flips because now you don't need 12. You need 24-plus backups. Yeah, exactly. And, and Jason said it. I mean, last year, Rodgers is number one in our rankings because of his consistency in fantasy and in reality where he has so many years of success in a row. Now, last year, it was, it was strange. His, his rating, we talked about a career rating of 104. He was 92 last year. You know, he had seven less touchdowns, about 500 less yards, and he had 5% lower completion rating. What that, happened? What <laughs> happened was Jordy, Jordy Sorry, I've been Nelson. waiting to get that in on the show forever from uh, uh, Mighty Wind. Mighty Wind reference oh. there. Oh. <laughs> Someone is going to identify with that. Yeah. All right, the, the rest of the people are going to be confused. Um, I'm done. I'm done for the show. 
But Jordy Nelson it was gone, oh. and and Eddie Lacy underwhelmed, and and, Ru- and Devontae Randall Adams. Cobb and De- Devonte Adams stinks, and Randall Cobb underwhelmed. He's not I mean, a one. He's not a one. And so you saw all of that, and then I think what you saw in Rodgers was him pressing to make things happen, held onto the ball too long, and made some mistakes. But look, before last year, you had six straight years of over 100 passer rating, very low interception totals, so that's great for fantasy, even compared to a guy like Breeze who has good years. Breeze normally is in the 15, 16 interceptions. So I don't think you're going to have much debate over Aaron Rodgers being slotted in there. I think the guy that we need to talk about now is number two, and that's Cam Newton. Last year's number one uh, quarterback slash running back. <laughs> you know, he had just such yeah. an incredible year where, what, he had 10 touchdowns on the ground? Is that yep, accurate? That is accurate. And 35 through the air. It was impressive because we, we went into last year thinking he had no wide receivers, and he made wide receivers out of thin air uh, And now, pretty much. And, and now, now he has he, some. He's got those guys that he – Developed something real with, and then Kelvin and we're talking Benjamin Ted Ginn, back. Corey Brown, um, Kotri yeah. was there last year, and then you had obviously uh, Greg Olson had the, a the, huge year. The biggest question for me is, uh, you're talking uh, an extreme and an outlier career best year for Cam Newton: thirty five touchdowns through the air. That's eleven better than his second highest total. He's thrown 24. That was his highest touchdown total through the air until this year. Can he duplicate that kind of success while maintaining 600 yards and 10 touchdowns on the ground? I have a great question for you because I think it's very possible he can. I think it's actually more likely that he repeats, not necessarily the numbers exactly, but the kind of success you saw in the field. So let's let's presume for a minute he does. He, he runs for 8 to 10 touchdowns. He throws for 30 to, or, you know, 33 to 35. Where is an appropriate uh, appropriate place to take the leap and take Cam Newton if you knew that was his production if, level? If you knew he was going to do that? Yeah. Then you're... Where I mean, would you take him? Like, you know that that's his stat line. Just reprint last year's line. Where could you viably take Cam Newton in light of all that we just said about streaming the position... But you, at, where at this you're point, not wasting the pick, where right. you're not wasting the pick, and is I would he, say the third round. Third round was what popped in my. Third head round as well. is where once those first two rounds of guys are gone, you see a little bit of drop off in talent, and those guys are the ones that I'm willing to sacrifice the third round and on. So there's been drafts that I've been in this year where Aaron Rodgers is is usually in the third, and sometimes I've seen him, uh, you know, get get lower. Uh, I would say he's going, you know, as high as the second. Get lower. <laughs> that, but if get low. <laughs> Yeah. Limbo. Uh, it, it's just one of those things where I'm going to be put to the test this year with Aaron Rodgers, very similar to how you're asking the hypothetical question on Cam. Okay, when are you getting the sweats for Aaron Rodgers? If, if what round? Your yeah, hands, is it the third round? Your hands the, start shaking. The third round is where I'm st- where I'm going. Uh, it's it's worth considering, and I won't do it. The fourth round is where I'm sweating. I'm okay, going. The, oh, the pits. You've pitted I out. I think I gotta. I think I gotta get him in the fourth. And I, I don't usually do that, but that would be so interesting. One one component that we're going to have in our draft kit that we release here in the next couple of months is the risk factor for positions. So I just want to get a gauge for Cam Newton before we move on to number three. One being safe, 10 being risky. Where do you have Ooh. him at quarterback this year? On that sliding scale, they're one to 10. How risky is Cam Newton? How safe is Cam Newton for putting up that kind of a, a stat line? I would – sorry, do you have a number? Yeah, well, I was going to say there's there's two different things here because when we're talking about that draft kit risk number, I think it's going to be very low with Cam Newton. Um, but a that's low risk. A low risk because he runs so much. His baseline in, in his legs is what allows there to not be a lot of risk where Which I think – Okay, so that answers the question. Yeah, I don't think he's going to finish, you know – bottom half of the QB ones because of his legs. So what number comes into your head? Uh, you know, I would give him a, like a four. If, if 10 is high and, and one is like no risk 10 at is all. risky, one is not risky. Yeah, I would give him a four, See, maybe even a three. I think three is about where really? I have him. I, I, have, I would have it at the five or the six. Okay. Uh, the reason why, or talking about Cam Newton's dominance, I was talking about I broke down quarterbacks five times. He was the number one quarterback, which is by far and away – the most for any quarterback. So that's why his numbers are so insane for fantasy. If he wasn't number one, though, you were getting a, not a great week. 
essentially from Cam Newton. He did have two third places, but besides that, you're talking he carried much a, lower. He carried end. a lot of people for a lot of weeks yes. towards the end of the year. Yeah, towards the end of the year, those, absolutely. Uh, interesting stat for Cam going into this next year. He has 31 games with both a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown in the same game. Currently tied for the <clears> most ever with Steve Young. In history. In history. So I think, I think did it he's going to break it. Did it in less than half the games? Yeah. All right, Tom Not Brady. Bad. Tom Brady's number three on this list. I think the impressive thing about Brady last year was the yardage total. He threw for over 4,700 yards, 36 yeah. touchdowns. He also finds a way to sneak a couple touchdowns during the course of the year, which, look, it, it all adds up. It was a valuable part of Andrew Luck's game a couple years ago when he put up a really big season. It's something that doesn't really change for Brady. He, he gets the opportunity if he's on the half-yard line to just somehow snap the ball and jump before everybody else wakes up. I don't know how he does it, but it's clearly a, a gift that him and Flacco work out together or something <laughs> like that. But Brady, um, Brady dealt with injury in his offense repeatedly. Yeah. Deion Lewis, Julian Edelman, Rob Gronkowski. He dealt with Br Brandon LaFell. The, the man without hands. <laughs> Brandon Just LaFell has moved on. The, the garbage can. They couldn't get rid of it. It's such a zero-sum game in the NFL, isn't it? Because you can go from yeah. basically a one yep. last year to three games of looking like you can't catch to see you later, hit the bricks. I mean, <laughs> it's That's just incredible. That's the Patriot way. It's inc well, it, it's really the NFL, too. I mean, you, you see that with kickers, right? You miss a few kicks, see you later. Goodbye. Yeah. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah, so. Tom, Tom Brady is a guy that I've really heated up on. Coming into last year, you know, one of the things with Tom Brady, I just spoke of, like, those great NFL quarterbacks that aren't always great for fantasy. And there was a big chunk of Tom Brady's career where he was still one of the, you know, two best quarterbacks in the NFL, but they really relied on a run game, and he wasn't the best fantasy quarterback, always overdrafted. Well, over the last, you know, he had that crazy 50-touchdown year, and then he got injured the next one. I... I remember that. Thanks, Andy, for unloading him to me. Uh, You're welcome. That year. But since he came back, he had a slow start, and after that, he is a touchdown machine. 36, 39, 35, uh, 33, and a 25 mixed in there. 36 last year. So you've got a lot of touchdowns. Tom Brady is as surefire a fantasy star when he's playing uh, as there is at the position. But I want to say this because this is kind of an evergreen show. We're recording this early. People are going to listen to our quarterback shows for a long time. And we don't know the news that will come out. We have to keep the suspension in mind. So you want to talk about oh, the, the, deflate gate? the possible looming deflate gate that kind of was a big scare last year. And then, hey, he got to play all the games. This year it might sneak up on us. So it's just one of those things where if you're drafting early for some reason – I, I would right now give him you know a seven or eight on my risk factor because I think there's a legitimate chance that he misses four games and if you're investing a high if you're taking him in a fourth round and you're missing a quarter of the yeah, season yeah. your your fantasy season's done now I have Brady at four you guys both have him at three is that correct uh, that's very possible and also this is why I have him at four in uh, in six point scoring okay so the, why I like Tom Brady. For everything that uh, Jason was talking about, where he hasn't necessarily been the best fantasy quarterback because of the running game. However, at this point in time, they have re-signed LeGarrette Blunt, and Deion Lewis is set to be the primary running back again, assuming he recovers from that ACL tear. That, to me, says Tom Brady is going to sling it, you know, 600 times again. So, th I think the passing numbers will be there. They don't have a Steven Ridley guy. Let LeGarrette Blunt for what he can do, they can't ride him the entire season. So it's going to be up to Brady to put up the points, which will be great for fantasy. All right, number four on our consensus list is Russell Wilson. He's my number three, Jason's four, Mike's five. I'm going to make the contention right now that Russell Wilson has the highest upside of any quarterback that can be drafted because of where you'll get him and what he did at the end of the year. And I, I don't want to overemphasize his last eight games. However... I do want to bring them to your attention because it could mean a new way forward. I think most of us believe the C the Seahawks without Marshawn Lynch are going to be more dependent on Russell Wilson. It doesn't mean he'll, he'll do what he did in the last eight games, but let me just put that in perspective. If you take his last eight games and you just meet, you just duplicate it for a season, it's 50 touchdowns. <laughs> it's 50 passing touchdowns. It's 4,500 <laughs> passing yards. And 500 attempts at the quarterback position. You mix that together with, I think he ran for, in the 
400, 500 range, maybe a little lower this past year because he was throwing the ball so well. Running? Yeah. Uh, 553 yards. So 550 on the ground with the pace that he had last year. Russell Wilson, where is he going right now in draft? Russell Wilson right now is the fifth quarterback off the board what round? going in the fifth round. So I, I think – As a better value, you're, you're basically saying, look, Cam Newton. Cam Newton last year was the combination of a lot of touchdowns through the air, uh, passing yards, and he had the legs. Russell Wilson has the chance to do exactly that, if not, if not you know, the, the potential for that or even more, and he's being drafted later. Certainly a better value in Russell Wilson than in Cam Newton because, like I said earlier, right, the, the first two rounds is where I don't want to give up one of those picks. The third, I consider it. And the I'm, fifth, I'm fine with. I'm trying to find the place where you talk about getting the sweats for Aaron Rodgers in the third round. I'd rather take Russell Wilson in the fifth round than Aaron Rodgers in the third round. Me I'd too. rather take Russell Wilson in the fifth than Cam Newton in the third or fourth round even. Well, and what you look for is a value too. So if Russell Wilson's ADP is the fifth, that means you might be in a draft where he drops deep into the sixth round. And at that point, that's hard to, you know, if, if you're getting a Russell Wilson who can easily finish as, you know, a top three option, he has been good for fantasy for several years, even when they haven't been a passing quarterback. Yeah, and he gives you a baseline every week, even in the beginning of the season. No, it was a different baseline. Oh, remember what one was it? Yeah, that was it. Um <laughs> different it wasn't very deep it was just a baseline <laughs> um so anyway i wanted to bring that to the attention because i think he might represent the most upside mixed with value in the draft of any of those players a lot of people are going to draft brady much higher than he did last year you know you put those two guys in the same round i'm gonna have a hard time picking between brady and russell wilson but i think i'm out on the cam newtons i'm out on there and rogers i'm probably out on the brady's yeah. i think wilson's the first time i start going you know, if I have a really nice first four rounds in the draft and I'm feeling real good about myself, I'm at least going to think for a split second about it. It will not be well, hard for me because I'll be passing. Yeah, I I think I would I, – normally, I don't Just take, like Russell Wilson. I, oh, that's very fair. I don't normally take a quarterback until like round eight or so, so that's probably still too rich for my blood, but the value is there. And I think if you it's are one of those guys that can't pass up quarterbacks early, <laughs> this is where you look at You act at like that's a con it's like it's a condition. Like yeah. if you've if you've made up in your mind that you're you know biologically you're incapable of giving up a quarterback in the first five rounds. I've got a fever. And the only yeah. prescription is quarterback an early quarterback. Do you, do you have do you D Q E <laughs> Drafting quarterback early? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Is this right. the commercial? That was the commercial. For wait, him. wait, wait. If we're doing a commercial, then you need to drop some. Do a you lot or of someone men. you know suffer <laughs> from DQE? Has it plagued you and your fantasy team over the last five years? Do your running backs suffer often <laughs> after the draft because you had to invest so highly at the quarterback position? But well, we have a solution for you. Russell... Wilson. Stop it. Russell <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> Russell. Oh, we hadn't. How did I not I, break I was the Russell surprised. Wilson out for I was a long time? surprised that uh, Russell Wilson was announced with his <sighs> regular name. We're, we're coming out with a medication that you can actually order <laughs> online for DQE. It's called the Ultimate Draft Kit. <laughs> it's called uh, the Kirk Cousins pill of streamers. That Because everybody who lost, we have so many Foot Clan members that won championships. Everybody who lost has the same story. Yeah. Kirk. Cousins killed. <laughs> Kirk Cousins killed me. I went up against him uh, and Reed in the championship game. All right, let's move on. Speaking of value, I'm surprised this this is the most surprising guy on the list so far. Uh, number five on the list is not Andrew Luck. Nope. It is Drew. Drew Brees. Brees. Drew Brees. He is three on Mike's, six on Jason and myself. So Mike, the floor and, is yours. And he is somehow eighth. he is eighth on the average person's. Which just represents a really uh, your average draft position right now. He's the eighth quarterback taken. See, when so you, we all when you said average person, I thought you were talking about yourself. <laughs> oh, uh, so my, my, may I remind you, champion? Uh, uh, could you. I could I interest you in a quarterback who has thrown for thirty or more touchdowns and over forty three hundred yards for eight straight seasons? <laughs> is that true? I'll take one. Yeah. Could I, could I interest you in that? Yeah, because I mean, that is exactly who Drew Brees. Is now look. I understand that that it start. It was a little rough to start the year with Breeze. The offense had to find its way. They had gotten rid of Jimmy Graham. Um, they weren't. Brandon Cooks was not 
uh, was, was not fully ready to be the man in New Orleans. And now you bring in a guy or once they finally said, Hey, let's go to, let's get the tight end involved in Ben Watson. Then the, the offense really got cooking. I'm going to make an argument for you though. Okay. I think that was an illusion. It was an illusion. It was a perceptive illusion about Drew Brees in the start of the season. Because if you look at his splits from the eight game mark, eight before, eight after, they are nearly identical. Same touch, really? same touchdown pace, almost the same yardage, same yards per attempt. Um, he's on you know 34 touchdown pace for both of them, almost the same attempts per game. But what you had is start of the year, real bad in three games, had the seven touchdown game that balanced out his first half of the season stats-wise. But I'm just making the argument that you just said what you said about him having all these years doing the same old thing. Well, he just did the same old thing all season long, but yeah, nobody paid yeah, attention. I, I was going to call you out on that seven touchdown game because that's that's more than – I mean, that's an absurd amount of touchdowns. Before that game, which that game didn't happen until uh, week eight, how many <laughs> touchdowns did he have before that single game, Andy? Um, less than eight. eight. Eight touchdowns. So I'm saying eight total. Uh, but no, right. the, so that just bound, that when you do the game the split of of halfway in the season, no, I, I get what you're the saying. The first seven games, he had eight total touchdowns. So it it did take it did take a minute to to fe- realize what is our team, uh, what is you know They're finding their way without Jimmy Graham, who was their main target, and that's why. Going in the last year, I was a little bit down on Drew Brees. He was a year older. He lost his main target. Things weren't looking great. This year, I like him a lot because it's the exact opposite. I mean, he's not a year younger, but he's got <laughs> Kobe Fleener coming in, who is much younger than Ben Watson. Brandon Cook's a year older and more developed. Willie Sneed now has established a role. I look at, at Mark great, Ingram gobbling up targets. Uh, yeah, exactly. You found out, oh, he can catch the ball. So now you have so many weapons for him. For him to be the eighth quarterback off the board in average drafts, that's probably my first target, the way that you're saying Russell Wilson might be the first guy you're genuinely looking at. For me, if I can get Drew Brees in the seventh or eighth round, if he could drop there, I, I, I won't pass him. All right, number six on the consensus ranking, and we got to move through these guys. Uh, it's fun to talk about them, and we will. So Andrew Luck deserves some conversation. Yes. Is he somebody that can – let me ask you this. Do, do you believe that Andrew Luck could be the number one quarterback this year? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, I, I believe it's – I would – as far as, like, do I think it's going to happen? No. And but I, d- does he have the chance? Yes. I agree completely with that. I, I, I don't – Obviously, we're not projecting him to be the number one, but he has the talent, right? He's done it before. Now, Jason and I both have luck one spot ahead of Breeze. Mike has him lower. Obviously, Breeze is number three on Mike's list. So, Andrew Luck, he gets to come back from injury. He's on the cusp of a big contract. This team was supposed to have all the offensive weapons together. Is this a case of kind of what we saw with Aaron Rodgers, only even worse, where it just didn't work this year. It wasn't going to be their year. They they mixed and matched the Frank Gores and the Andre Johnsons right. and these other pieces. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's fair. But what I don't what I hope people don't expect is 2014 over 4,700 yards and 40 touchdowns. Right. I mean, you went he went 23 touchdowns rookie year, 23 sophomore year, 40 touchdowns. Uh, he was on pace for about 30. That's perfectly fine. If you want to give Andrew Luck the low 30s and touchdowns, that's he, he was on pace for almost that many interceptions too. Yeah, he's well, he's always been a high interception guy, but last year was especially bad. And while he was playing, he was throwing for an average of six yards per throw, which is per attempt. That's, per attempt. That that was that's s- brutal. Last second to last, only to Case Keenum. <laughs> and, and so, oh, whenever you're in a stat and Case Keenum is the comp, yeah, not, oh, you got to quit. Not good, but obviously quit. he was drafted number one overall uh, in the in that in the real NFL draft because he is a, a generational type of quarterback. He's proven he did finish that one year as the number one fantasy option. I have him ranked above Drew Brees because I expect the bounce back, but I don't like him as much as Drew Brees. One to ten risk factor for Andrew Luck. Ten being riskiest, well, one being what safest. What is what are you uh, what are you expecting? So I should say that a risk on what expectation? I, I'm I'm more taking an overview of safe at the position, safe as a starting QB one at the position. Oh, I would. That's put really that, the the question. I would put him pretty safe. Yeah, in, I, I agree. As I'd a, give him as a QB one. I'd give him a three. But as far as safety to be, what do you want a number? 
Well, I I did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh two. Okay. Very yeah. very very safe to be a quarterback one, but to be a top three quarterback, I would not. Now, is that. there any chance? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, but Matthew Stafford was drafted as the number one quarterback overall, right? Yes. Correct. The so, number one player in the draft. And in yes. his third year uh, playing, he threw for 41 touchdowns. Is that correct? Same same as Andrew Luck? Yes. Because and Luck at 40. So. Yeah. My point is, there is a world here where what we've seen, because, you know, Matthew Stafford, oh, man, he was on top of the world. But now we look back and we see that, Anything he's, that can happen. He's only thrown. Can happen in reverse. He's only thrown for more than thirty touchdowns one other time outside yep, of that. Yep. Oh, for thirty, everything else has been in the twenties, and that's what Andrew Luck's trend looked like. So the question is: was was that year the year before last? Was that the outlier, or was that the where he was trending? Stay tuned. You'll yeah. find out this year. I vote outlier. Just just throw it I'm, out. Then there. I'm surprised that you've only got him in a two risk. I would say no, two risks for a quarterback, one. The risk saying uh, draft him to be a top three quarterback, I would say that's nuclear volatile. Yeah, dangerous. And, and he's going to cost you more than a Drew Brees. Number seven is Carson Palmer on the consensus rankings. We've all got him inside our top ten, and it's a it's a case of mathematics for me. One David Johnson plus one Larry Fitzgerald plus one Michael Floyd plus one John Brown equals – Equals, Carson Palmer. He was a successful quarterback. It's it's the inverse argument that you have with if Russell Wilson's going to go throw 30 to 40 touchdowns, uh, someone's got to catch him on that offense, and that's the Doug Baldwin, yeah. Tyler Lockett. Uh, you know, I know you're super high on Jimmy Graham, uh, <laughs> Jason Morris. Um, and Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> so Carson Palmer, to me, I, I just don't see, uh, barring injury, I don't see the way he gives you a bad year. I just don't. I don't know how that happens. Thirteen and three team. Uh, I. I'm not. I'm not seeing a way that he has a, a terrible year. I, I. don't see it. Yeah, I completely agree. But it's. It's a higher powered offense. You have three great options at wide receiver, and you. You now you're adding in David Johnson, a spectacular release valve to get some cheapy yards and cheap touchdowns. Uh, I. Yeah, Carson Palmer had an eight point seven. Uh, average he had a ypa of 8.7 which is that's crazy high i'm not expecting that to continue however what we know about bruce arians is multiple times a game he will dial up the shot and between brown and michael floyd you have guy two guys who that's they can make their money doing that so that that's going to boost him up uh, i just I, i'm with andy that i don't see a way he he doesn't succeed in giving you quarterback one numbers. I think that there's going to be a bit of a regression for him, but low 30s in the touchdowns, maybe the yards come down a couple hundred, but you're still going to get a, a back-end QB one. Now, what what about uh, – but but Mike and Andy. <laughs> yes. Couldn't David Johnson get a lot of touchdowns on the ground and take him away from Carson Palmer through the air? Yeah, and he did last year, and Carson Palmer still dropped 35 touchdowns. Yeah, keep it down, boys of public opinion. <laughs> I'm just – hey, that wasn't me, man. E, yeah, you, you need to actually sometimes respond to the voice of public opinion yourself. I'll just take to over. To just show that uh, – Eli Manning is number eight on our consensus top ten quarterbacks. Maybe a surprise for people who would have expected a Big Ben here. Maybe a Blake Bortles – I am not surprised because he has a guy by the name of Odo Beckham Jr. to throw to. That helps. He also is a volume type of uh, passer. He just puts up large quantities of passing yardage, and he has a consistency in the offense this year that I think has us all pretty confident that you get a, a nice baseline out of Eli Manning. Now, I will say this, and you guys, Jason, you can speak to your thoughts on Eli here. I kind of don't want to play him. I don't know why that is. I Of all the guys in this list, Eli is the guy I don't like slotting in week huh. after week because he has these dud games. Yeah. Yes, that's fair. He that is, he is just hot. make you wonder, you know, did he, he swoop his hair the wrong way? I mean, what happened? Very, very hot and cold. Last year, uh, last year my two quarterbacks for most of the season were Eli Manning and, and Cam Newton, so I kind of experienced the ebbs and flows of those two guys, and, and one was a rock steady you you talk about how Cam Newton could really ruin it for you. I feel like Eli Manning far more often. Yes, yes. Five games with one or less touchdown. Yeah, that's just not going to help you out. So you've got those big boom games, and I think he's a perfect streamer. And generally speaking, you will get Eli Manning off of waivers through the year. When somebody – he'll go draft. Because he'll have one of those games yeah. and someone exactly. will – 
screw you, Eli, yeah, the- to the waiver wire. He'll get drafted, but he'll get dropped. So I, I agree with you, even <laughs> though he's this high. This is where we see him finishing the year. Yep. But this is not what we're saying draft order. Our rankings are not necessarily draft order. I don't want to play Eli, and I don't want to play against Eli. That yep. is exactly what happens in my leagues. Is I More often than not, he beats me. When I think I have the, I, I've got a better quarterback, and Eli goes out and throws four or five touchdowns against me, and I'm like, "Where are you? The Where last, were you? The last two years, Ben McAdoo has completely revitalized Eli Manning. He, it looked like he was going to destroy him in right. year one. Which yes, was, yes. But the last two years, I mean, over 4,400 yards. He has in his entire career has one other season where he had this outlier of almost 5,000 yards, but consistent. Last two years, over 4,400 yards. 30 touchdowns two years ago, 35 touchdowns last year. So it, it's the offense is now gearing into the skills that Eli currently has. Odo Beckham doesn't hurt things. Uh, they took they took a bit of damage. They lost Reuben Randall. <laughs> okay. So you got to knock him down a little bit. Right. Yeah, a little bit. A little, well, a little, you know, like a, like a morsel. <laughs> nope. No, nope. I, 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 here, here's why. Because I know Ruben Randall did get you know a what that bunch is? of touchdowns. That's, that's when the car gets into – you think it gets in a wreck, and then you go up with your thumb, and it was just a – you can get the smudge right, right off the car, I, and you're fine. Yeah, uh, and you know who's going to get that smudge off? Who's Odell that? Beckham. Yeah. He's going to raise his level again. They're going to draft somebody. He's going to finish number one. They're I think gonna, they're going to draft somebody we'll be excited about. Yeah, they will. A uh, Coleman or something. Sure. All right, let's go to number nine on the consensus, the BB gun himself, Blake Bortles. But Andy, <laughs> oh agree. no! What and, are you doing here, Andy? Why is Blake Bortles so low? He he was awesome last year. He was like one of the best quarterbacks. He's young. Well, he's getting vo- better. Voice of public opinion. I I know you like Blake Bortles, but well, he he just doesn't have sustainable numbers at the quarterback position. Oh, you think Allen Robinson sucks? No, I think I I love Allen Robinson, but Blake Bortles threw so much in the red zone. Stay with us, okay? We'll okay. be okay. okay. We still have him in our top ten voice of public opinion. Yeah, and, and come on, listen up, public opinion. He's good, but there's regression here. I think the biggest regression, a lot of people talk about the fact that the team is going to be better, right? The, I the, think they are. The defense is going to be improved. They're not going to have – he was a king of garbage time. He yeah. really was. But that's not the issue I have. The issue I have is Christopher Ivory. Chris Ivory is going to he, – he's going to have – seven touchdowns next year that's that's probably so I don't remember the exact number I gave him but I'm guessing he gets six or seven on the ground which would be more than double well, what think, they had on the ground say, last I think Chris, year as a team Chris Kringle could have more touchdowns I mean the number they put up oh, last year oh, so. the numbers they put up last year were as epically low red zone running numbers that you could ever have yeah, TJ yeah. Yeldon had two touchdowns on the ground Denard Robinson had one and Toby Gerhardt one week during the year, dreamt oh. of having a touchdown. He was he was so close. All so four, many all times. four attempts, so all close. <laughs> all right, so Blake is sitting here at nine, but there is a lot of hype about him. Jason, you do have him higher than we do. It's all pretty close, though. Yeah, yep. I still think he's good. And and one of the things that it's always important for us to say this is very similar to our tight end discussion because when we get to some of these quarterbacks, there are some of these. I'll I'll give you a, you know a good example of a guy. I really, really, really like Ben Roethlisberger this year. I think he's going to be fantastic. He is my 15th ranked quarterback. We're not even close to talking about Ben Roethlisberger yet if we were going by my rankings, and I really like him, genuinely. He's going to have 5,000 yards next year. This is not, you know, we're not knocking guys or saying. Th- this pool is so deep of serviceable quarterbacks and and yet again, that's why we just don't waste high picks on the position. Yeah. Okay. So number ten, are you ready for this? This is the last guy in our top ten that we're break, bringing to you today, and then we'll have uh, ten more on Thursday. You know, I I think I need something for this before we get A to this uh, crazy man drop. No. Okay. Which one are you looking for? There's there's something about my mind in my. My mind's telling me no, but my body. body. My body. My body me it yeah, this player is brought to you by Mike. I was going to say, this is uh, by far the biggest disparity. Mike has him at seven. I have him at 17. Jason has decided to, to Switzerland this bad boy at 11. <laughs> and uh, without further ado, 
It, no, it's not Big Ben or Derek Carr or Andy Dalton or Tony Romo or Ryan Fitzpatrick or Case Keenum. Uh, it's Philip Rivers. Old Man Rivers. So make the case, deliver the goods. Okay. Shake the beard, see what falls out. Let's hear about Philip Rivers. Here's the deal with Philip Rivers. Keenan Allen. I would expect Keenan Allen not to lacerate his kidney and play an entire season. Here are the numbers that Philip Rivers was putting up in the first eight games. He was averaging 344 yards a game. That's a pace of over 5,500 yards. He was over two touchdowns a game. He was over 30 completions a game. Now, as soon, and, and if, if you were riding the Philip Rivers wagon with me, it was sweet for a while. And then Keenan Allen went out and everything fell apart. His Rivers yardage per game dropped 90 yards. He went down by over a touchdown a game, five completions. You're talking massive numbers to a massive dip because Keenan Allen was so crucial to that, uh, to that offense, which is why I like Allen so much and why I like Rivers at the back of my quarterback one. And so you're really a- appropriating a value on Keenan Allen in that offense the same way we would look like if – if Matt Ryan didn't have Julio Jones. Exactly. Or if if, if uh, Beckham went down or for Antonio New York. Brown for Big Ben or something like that. Yes. I mean, the, uh, the numbers are – I don't think these numbers are lying. So let's clarify here. You have them ranked as high as seven. Yes. But you're talking about getting Phillip Rivers at the very end of this draft. Yes. You're, uh, like Jason just said, that the, the, the rankings are not – we're not saying you have to draft people in this order. We're saying – that's how I believe that they will finish. You always take into account the average draft position. You always take into account the value that the other league mates place upon that player. And Phillip Rivers, generally speaking, should be a guy that you can get near the double digits. I think there's going to be some people who like him. Uh, I don't think he's going to be an undrafted guy or anything like that. However, you can get him very late, and the upside is there as he was right around the the top three quarterbacks for uh, for the for the extended period that Allen was actually playing. I don't really have anything negative to say about Phillip Rivers other than the fact he just slotted in statistically as the 17 on this list. And I think it, he's going to do well. I do think, you know, if, if Woodhead's involved in the offense, it reflects well on, on Rivers' numbers because you get a lot of passing touchdowns to the running back. You get a lot of cheap yardage, so to speak, yes. where you get the dump-offs yes. and, then, and then you make up some hay. And I think this, once again, these uh, – one, we're in the lower rankings of the quarterbacks. Their projections were, are have been squashed. These guys are very close. So, like Andy said, while well, Rivers is 17 for him, I would say you still, I you still, still like him. Yeah, he's not, I, he, you don't like him like I do, but you think he's serviceable. Clearly, I am drafting most likely a different guy to be that starting week one quarterback than Phillip Rivers. But that doesn't mean I don't think he's going to give elite weeks during this year. He's He's in the streaming mix for me. He could come up a little bit if I like what I see from that team in this offseason. If they can protect him. The offensive line was yes, such yes, a problem. Fair. If Phillip Rivers could be rejuvenated, it doesn't matter if he's on his back. So that's the big problem that I have. So that is our top ten. I'm going to read them back real quick. You got Aaron Rodgers, Cam Newton, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, and Drew Brees. That's our first five. Then you got Andrew Luck, Carson Palmer, Eli Manning, Blake Bortles, and Phillip Rivers rounding out our consensus top ten. You can see them all on the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. That's also where you can submit questions to the show. You can check out jointhefoot.com where we've released our uh, our Foot Clan League. So if you are a member, uh, a supporter of the show, you get access to a, a group of committed players if you want to be in a good league. We talk so much about these you know, fun leagues that we're in with good players people and it, it's no fun to be in a league with three hardcore people and seven people who don't remember players names or don't use the waiver wire i mean it, it's fun for like a week or two and then you realize you're not really competing and so if you want to get involved check out jointhefoot.com join a foot clan league get access to the uh, some special stuff on the show oh, oh speaking speaking of the uh of join the foot we have something to pay oh, out now a big big thank you to our foot clan community because now because of them we actually have to do a combine <laughs> Oh, that just happened, didn't it? Yeah, we just passed the threshold where oh, the three of my. us are going to be putting together an <laughs> NFL-style combine. You're going to have to watch my overweight uh, self run a 40. We're going to do all the combine <laughs> events that we can, and can we break the – I mean, is it done deal? No, no, that's that's still top secret. That's all right, there's some secret. secret. Uh, We're working on some really good stuff. Production value will be high. Also, we'll bring I'm, it to you. I'm going to throw this out there. 
If my 40 time is slower than Jason, the oh, fantasy no. footballers will have two hosts. Because, <laughs> oh, 50%. Because I will be not here. Oh. Yeah, not here anymore. Is this why you're going on? Is this the last two weeks you're preparing yeah, give, for the combine? I'm my notice. All right. <laughs> come back on Thursday. Join us uh, hey, on hey, the web. Podcastawards.com, please. Yes. For listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. I will beat Mike. <laughs>